RealAirculture.com's coverage of the Southwest Ag Conference in Richtown, Ontario is brought to you by Pride Seeds, High Stick NT, and CNM Seeds. We're joined today on RealAirculture.com by Fred Bilo from the University of Illinois. Welcome to me, Fred. Thank you. Fred, your speech today, or your discussion today at, uh, at SWAC was about pushing corn yields to 300 bushels an acre. Is this possible? Yes, 300 bushels is possible. Every year, someone in the U.S. National Corn Growers Contest does grow 300 bushels. I myself have seen 300 bushels 25 years ago. So even 25 years ago with crop management, you could grow 300 bushels. It's just that the average corn production in the U.S. is more like 155 bushels. Right. So are you, when you're talking about pushing corn yields to 300 bushels, are you talking about pushing the national average to 300 bushels? I think the, the concept of 300 bushels is to push the national average to, the, is to push the national average to 300. And this is based on population gain and being able to feed a growing population at the same level right. now. And most models would suggest we need to double grain production. Hence, corn production on average has to go from around 150 that it is now to 300 in the next 40 years. We only have so many acres, right? We're, we're, we're kind of somewhere between, let's say, 89 to 93 million acres this year in the U.S. Uh, uh, we only have so many acres. We have to increase it. Yeah, there are, I guess our choice is to raise yield, is to, is to find more acres or raise the yield on more acres. And I think there's no other way to do it other than intensify and produce more on, on each acre of land. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Are we going to, is it going to be genetic gains, or is it going to be more agronomic, is there changes to the way we agronomically grow the crop? I think it's going to be a combination of marrying technology, technology and application and management with the advances in biotechnology. Okay. Biotechnology can change the makeup and the composition of the plant so quickly that I think today there's yield to be gained in today's high tech biotech hybrids through crop management. Okay, so what are some of those crop management tech techniques that you're talking about? Well, what we're doing is we're looking at a package of management factors that we know individually are important and then we've combined them in a package. And these are things like the availability of nitrogen, trying to minimize weather-induced nitrogen loss. We're using the best triple or smart stack genetics. We're Fertilizing a higher population, we're increasing the population, and then we're fertilizing that with balanced nutrition, and then we're protecting all that with a fungicide. So our package involves higher populations of the best genetics, fed with balanced nutrition and protected with a fungicide. Okay. So when you when you uh, are you so are you talking about increasing the seeding rate, or what are you what are you talking about? So, so when I talk about population, I am talking about increasing the seeding rate. And uh, most farmers know that uh, population has been one of the factors that has increased steadily in recent years. And uh, it's only going to go higher in the future. And this is because plant population is a component of yield. If you think of the corn crop as a solar panel to intercept light, and each corn plant is a cell in that solar panel, then the more corn plants, the more light intercepted. And if you don't intercept the light in the first place, you can't turn it into yield. And so increasing plant density is the foundation for higher yield, but it has to be managed, right? You, you mentioned fungicides. Uh, they just, it, even, not just in corn, but across all crops, just seem to become such a bigger part, play a bigger role in achieving higher yields. Has corn kind of always been that way, or? Well, the use of fungicide in corn has been relatively uh, recent. Um, fungicides are ob obviously used to, to control yield losses due to disease, but the strobilin fungicides seem to have a additional growth regulator effect that keeps the leaves greener longer. So not only is disease controlled, but there, in many cases, is this plant health or plant performance effect that allows leaves to photosynthesize longer. And sometimes this results in an increase in standability or an increase in yield, even in the absence of disease. 
So you talked about uh, smart stacks and stuff like that. Do, do you see uh, in the U.S. Uh, farmers looking at this as per, you know this is exactly what I need. This is really going to help me get that next step of yield. Or how, what has been the feed, what has been the reaction or the feedback from farmers in that regard? So farmers have very rapidly adapted the triple and smart stack technology, and I think they've adapted it because it works and they see an increase in, in yield. Um, one of the huge advantages of the triple and smart tech technologies comes from the control of the root worm trade. Mm -hmm. And when you can protect the investment that the plant has already made in the roots, that allows the roots to maintain activity longer. And then all the things that roots do, nutrients, water, growth regulators, anchorage, they are manifested. So we typically see yield differences of at least 15 bushels when we compare the triple or smart stack to the refuge. Mm -hmm. And because of that difference, it, 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 uh, um, we'd like to decrease the amount of the refuge. And the smart stack allows you to only have five instead of 20% refuge. So when we look at uh, growing the crop of corn, do you think we still have much to learn about how to grow corn, or do you think we're just we're just uh, we're, we've kind of learned as much as possible? Well, where do you think we are with that? I think we're still scratching the surface on what the possibilities of corn is, and I think this is particularly true in the biotech world. Corn, the, the the genome of corn has been sequenced. Many of the genes in corn are known. They're mapped. They can be manipulated. Corn is sort of a genetic dream, being a diploid. Um, plant that has heterosis. So the corn plant continues to surprise me with its biological potential and the capability to positively alter it through biotechnology. So the dream of a national average of 300 bushels, is it, how possible is it and do you, what is your timeline? Well I think it's, I don't want to wait 40 years because I'm working in this business now and so I'd like to right now be able to grow 300 bushels on well-managed soils with progressive farmers. Uh, and this, then the rest of the world can learn from those how it is done. Um, when I look at the yield potential of corn, that is, that is unlimited light, unlimited everything, that one often achieves by harvesting an end row, then I often see the potential of corn is somewhere in the 450 to 500 bushel range. And so I think we're only just beginning to tap the yield potential that is possible in the corn crop. And I, I think that's good news for uh, the, the, the possibility to, to get three bushels. Fred, thanks a lot and good luck with the rest of the conference.